But the other thing to observe in, um, in the stories of Jesus is that Jesus uh, deals with many smaller uh, disorientations of uh, blind people and lame people and uh, lepers and poor people and in the case of Lazarus and Jairus' daughter, dead people. And what you notice in those narratives is that the needy person or the family of the dead person come up and summon Jesus to come into their life or into their house. Uh, you remember the blind Bartimaeus in Luke says, uh, Son of David, have mercy on me. So that's a, that's a very small prayer of lament. When I was in seminary, I was taught out of the, the tradition of St. Augustine that God takes all initiatives, prevenient grace and all that stuff. But it's not true. If you, if you look at the way those transactions work with Jesus, the needy person must take the initiative and must summon Jesus into the transaction. So I want to suggest that psalms of disorientation are basically prayers that seek to mobilize God on the assumption that if you don't summon God, nothing will happen. And, and that, that causes us to think, I believe, primitively about the power of prayer. Uh, that, that we really are summoning God into the transaction because if you can get God to pay attention, then everything will change because God has the power to change. Uh, Karl Barth, uh, the greatest theologian, uh, Protestant theologian of the 20th century, uh, said in his little book on the Lord's Prayer that prayer causes God to do things that God would not otherwise do. That's very primitive. Uh, and all we know about that is that uh, people who are in great distress do pray that way, even though people uh, whose lives are well-oriented might think that that's kind of uh, foolish and superstitious uh, to pray that way.